welcome to the Asset Revolution Podcast, where each week, your hosts from Arbor Digital provide educational opportunities for financial advisors and individual investors to gain knowledge in this emerging powerhouse that is digital asset investing. The Asset Revolution Podcast is your connection to the future of digital assets and an opportunity for anyone to get off zero. Let's dive in. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to this edition of the Asset Revolution podcast. I am humbly joined by an esteemed guest, Rick Edelman, who does not need an introduction from me. So, Rick, I would love it for you to just kind of dive in. Who are you and why are you here today? Uh, well, I'm here because you invited me, Mark, and thank you very much for that. I, re- I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I uh, created uh, what is now the largest uh, RAA in the country, Edelman Financial Engines, which has uh, about $300 billion in assets under management, uh, 1.4 million clients around the country. And uh, after building that company, my wife and I, for the past 36 years, we left at the end of 2021. Uh, in a, a long planned uh, transition. We started that exercise about six years ago, announced it last June of 2021, uh, and made it effective at the end of the year. Uh, you know, the firm now has a robust management team, and uh, it's a big company with 1,500 employees. And so we've decided to move on to our next chapter, with which for me is focusing on uh, blockchain and digital assets. Uh, as part of our transition over the past four years, I created this organization, uh, DACFP, the Digital Assets Council of Financial Professionals. Uh, I've been involved in blockchain, Bitcoin, and digital assets since 2012. And I quickly realized that this is a a big deal. This is probably the most profound uh, commercial innovation since the internet. And yet most financial advisors are unfamiliar with this, they don't know how it works, they don't understand the business uses or the investment opportunities. And so I created DACFP as an educational uh, forum to teach advisors uh, about this so they can figure out how best to serve their clients. And we now offer the certificate in blockchain and digital assets. Uh, and already we launched it in May with no fanfare and already we're pushing close to 2000 advisors who are already enrolled in the program. Wow, and that's wonderful growth from that. and. It's, it's so inspiring. And you were actually one of the uh, influencing uh, people for us at Arbor Digital and you know, myself. And, you know, obviously you've been on other shows with Matt Koleski, my partner, um, for us to really dive into this space in a thoughtful and disciplined way. You know, you mentioned a lot about, you know, it's great that this space is evolving because it's maturing and, you know, we're getting more adults in the room. I, I kind of appreciate a lot that kind of saying, because it means we're getting more thoughtful, disciplined approaches instead of what's currently been kind of pushed out there on influencer channels and and things of that nature. Um, So DACFP and the credential program that we went through, that was one of our first pieces that we did. Um, So we really appreciate what you've been bringing to the forefront of the industry for financial advisors, because we are one of them. Um, But let's uh, let's kind of dive into that, because I know there's a lot of exciting things. You already mentioned some of the things in the future coming for you, your wife, and kind of the the organizations you now are going to continue to build. But let's first start off. We've, we've had 2021, we've had a lot of episodes and there's been a lot of conversations about our reviews, but let's kind of look ahead to 2022. So just give us the quick high level. What do you see 2022 being about with crypto and digital assets? We'll see it continue to uh, penetrate the mainstream. Uh, it's growing up and it's growing up rapidly and it's really very exciting time. Uh, there are a lot of things going on all simultaneously. So it's important uh, that you stay current, although it's kind of hard to do that sometimes uh, because it's such a rapidly uh, growing environment, partly because of the technological innovation. I mean, it was uh, less than a year ago, nobody had ever heard of an NFT. Nine months ago, nobody had ever heard of DeFi. Four months ago, nobody had ever heard of the metaverse. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and, and so this is just evolving very, very rapidly, and it's reflective of the investment opportunities that go with it. But at the same time, as we get more and more mainstreaming, more and more maturity, more and more adult supervision, as you mentioned, <laughs> uh, we're also seeing the headwinds from the broader financial marketplace. I mean, look what's going on as we record this. 
The stock market's doing terribly uh, this year. There are a lot of fears about the bond market because rising interest rates mean bond prices fall. There are worries of new tax rates on the horizon as Congress works through the new tax bill. Uh, we have higher inflation. Uh, we're still dealing with the pandemic. Uh, we've got concerns from rogue nations, everything from North Korea to the Middle East to now Russia rattling saber swords over Ukraine. Uh, and we've got an election coming up in November. Oh, my goodness. You know, and so there's a lot going on that is very easy to distract people from the core element here. We are talking about a technological innovation mm -hmm. that despite everything going on in the news, that technology is here to stay. And this technology represents massive improvements for businesses and therefore for consumers. Thanks to blockchain technology, which is simply a result of today's computer power, we can conduct business faster, cheaper, and safer than ever before. And this means we're seeing an entire new range of companies emerging that is developing this technology and another set of companies that are exploiting and using the technology to grow their businesses. We saw this happen with the internet back in the 90s, and we're experiencing it again today. And so it's really, really exciting. We're going to see, therefore, two things happen this year, Mark. We're going to see price volatility. Nothing new about that when it comes to crypto. <laughs> no, nope. We've had already five occasions over the last decade where Bitcoin's price has fallen more than 50%. There's going to be another occasion, probably several more. So you're going to see price volatility. That represents buying opportunities for people who are constantly investing. And second, we're going to see further development and inclusion and participation by not only retail investors, but institutional investors as well. And the more and more that happens, you'll see more and more involvement and ultimately more and more stability for the pricing uh, and more and more investment opportunities. So it's going to be the tale of two cities in 2022 with a lot of excitement and those who have a long-term focus, meaning the next three to five years, not necessarily the next two to three months, uh, we see this as really very exciting. Yeah, and I'm really happy you chose those two things to narrow in on because we we completely agree. And especially, we actually, right now is at a point where you're gonna you're gonna see people who come you know, when things are great, right? Last year was a year where everything was going well, especially when things hit that May top, right? And everybody's releasing a fund and releasing this and releasing that. And really when you see these downturns, these times of distress or declines in, in prices or the headlines are a little bit scarier than normal, you know, the fear and greed index is something, you know, a lot of crypto natives follow, you know, when that's at its lowest, it's really when you see, okay, who's really convicted in the asset class and who's convicted in the long-term viability of the underpinning technology, which is really, I like in these moments, and especially today as we're recording, we're seeing, you know, some of all of those headwinds that you mentioned come to fruition with some bigger price declines, not just with crypto, but obviously traditional uh, risk assets as well. Um, but we see who these, uh, these strategies or funds or other people who are engaged really get tested their conviction. And that's where we're, we try to be one of those four clients as well. So it sounds like it's really, this is going to be a year where, hey, your conviction is going to be tested. If you're in it for the long term, then now's the time to really continue your dollar cost averaging in. Um, and then your second point was more inclusion, right? And I think uh, I was listening yesterday, you were on with uh, Global X ETFs, Matt, um, what's his last name, Kunky? Matt, Matt Kunky. Matt Kunky, yeah. And you guys were talking about this idea and how a lot of people got onboarded and nobody predicted that this was the way that people are going to get onboarded. So you mentioned some of the things. What are some other ways that you see in 2022 that others are going to get on board, both institutionals and maybe as individual investors? Well, we're seeing uh, the acknowledgement broadly uh, on a worldwide basis that this technology is here to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a result, Bitcoin is here to stay. And Ethereum, which is even more impactful for business than Bitcoin itself is, and many of the other related coins and tokens that are being developed. Uh, the NFT marketplace is brand new, and we're not really even sure how broad and wide and big this can really become. But when you see companies like Facebook change the name of their firm to Meta Platforms, when you see Microsoft buying Activision for $70 billion, you realize there's a there there. You know, you've got some very serious players, the biggest companies in the world, making very big investments into this space, clearly this isn't going away. And as a result, we're seeing major institutions, pension funds, endowments, 
uh, insurance companies, even sovereign funds making massive investments into this space, recognizing it represents one of the most important investment opportunities uh, of the decade uh, and probably of the past 20 years. Uh, and we also see governments weighing in on this. We are now seeing governments asking the question, not if, but how. Mm -hmm. uh, do we engage? Uh, the, the Federal Reserve just this week released its long-awaited report on the development of its own CBDC. We've got half a dozen countries around the world who have already launched their CBDCs. Other major countries, including China and Russia, are now have announced that they're going to release theirs. So you're in a scenario where there's so much going on, you can't be left out because that's what will you'll be. You'll be left out. Uh, a survey uh, study was done last year projecting that over the next five years, there's going to be $5 billion of revenue. We're talking about fee-based revenue mm -hmm. that are going to be earned by financial advisors between now and 2026. So the only question advisors have is, do I want any of that? Mm -hmm. um, your clients are asking about Bitcoin. They want to understand it. They want to know, should they invest? If so, how much? And what should they invest, be investing in? And if you as a financial advisor can't answer that question, if you can't give your client the advice that they're seeking, they're going to leave you and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not just making that up. That was the result of a NIDIG survey last year. 82% of clients say that they expect their advisors to be able to answer their questions. And 62% said, if my advisor can't help me, I'll find one who can. So advisors need to recognize whether you like Bitcoin or not, you need to be knowledgeable about it. You know, it, to me, it's the same thing as annuities. We all have strong opinions about annuities. Some of us love them, some of us hate them, but all of us are able to explain why we feel the way we feel. And if an advisor can't tell a client in plain English why they like or don't like Bitcoin, they're gonna lose credibility with that client and they'll probably lose the client. So advisors realize this now, they're getting so many questions from so many clients, they don't have a choice but to get knowledgeable. And our job at DACFP is to give you that knowledge. I'm not trying to sell you Bitcoin. I, we're just an educational group. I don't care whether you buy it or not, whether you recommend it or not. I just want you to be doing whatever you're doing for the right reasons that make sense for you, your practice, and your clients. So we provide pure education on how this stuff works. We'll leave it to you to figure out whether you should proceed. If you want to proceed, we show you as well. Here are the companies and the services that are available in the marketplace to help you in your efforts to do your do right by your clients, serving their best interests. Uh, so this is why we're so excited about it, uh, Mark, because everybody's getting involved. We're seeing major institutions, governments around the world, as well as individual investors, and advisors are a little uh, behind the curve. And we need to catch up and take the lead so that we can serve our clients right. Absolutely. And we, abs we share in your excitement and the the positive energy that's flowing from DAC FP, from the entire team and yourself on every single phone call, every single webinar, um, because it's just, it's too important for your client relationships not to at least have that stance or position, whether you believe in it or not. And I think when you say things like that, that really comes through and resonates for a lot of people because it's no different than any other maybe exotic investment or anything. I'm, this isn't the first time something like this has come to client relationships, right? You know, when I was practicing, a lot of times clients are called like, hey, I saw this really crazy new stock that's a small cap, just came in, they got this great thing that's coming, what should I do? And it's like, what would be the first thing you would do normally? You'd say, well, listen, I've never heard of it, unless you have, um, but most of the time it was some obscure thing that you know we're not really paying attention to, but hey, let me educate myself, I'll, let me get back to you so that way we can make a rational decision on this and I can at least understand a little bit better. You wouldn't just say, don't do anything, just forget about it, all that stuff, you would go educate yourself. So that's the natural process that you would normally go through in your client relationship. It's no different here. Go get educated and have a stance. And then you can actually say and have that, you know, whether you believe it or not, or we're going to incorporate it uh, into the practice. So it's, it's, it's really interesting. We, we do a lot of educational events. That's all we're about. We do tons of webinars and, and live events uh, on, on a regular basis through DACFP. And you can get our full schedule at our website uh, at DACFP.com. And very, very commonly, we encounter skepticism, if not outright hostility, from advisors <laughs> yeah. uh, about this. And 
what I often do when, when we do our, our, our long form events uh, of six or eight hours, um, these are uh, deep dive events for advisors who really want to learn this stuff. Uh, we poll the advisors coming into the room about their views of Bitcoin. And routinely, advisors uh, say, in fact, the last time we did this, uh, we had 90% of the people going into the room saying they don't own Bitcoin, they aren't recommending it to clients, and they have no intention to do so. That was 90% of the advisors walking in the room. We're talking about a couple of hundred financial advisors. Mm -hmm. We surveyed them again at the end of the class, eight hours later, as they're walking out of the room, same questions. Do you own it? Do you, do you plan to buy it? Do you plan to recommend it? And now 90% said, yes, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to start recommending it. So all it takes is some education, mm -hmm. understanding, getting rid of the myths, getting rid of the misconceptions, putting aside the fallacies, understanding the proper role this can have in a diversified portfolio so that you can serve your client's best interest. And most importantly, most selfishly for us as financial advisors, attract, retain clients and assets. And if we can do so while simultaneously serving their best interest, all the better. And what we have to simply recognize is that this is a brand new technology. It's a brand new asset class. It's the first new asset class in 150 years. And that's saying something. I mean, the last time we had something totally new and different was oil. When oil was discovered in the 1850s in Texas and then in Saudi Arabia, this was totally new and different. Prior to oil, we were using whale oil and candles. <laughs> um, and so along comes oil. This was unbelievably disruptive and revolutionary. And it took a while, a long time, for the world to get with it. Thanks to technological innovation, we're faster at adoption. So it's not gonna take 100 years for Bitcoin to get adopted. It's gonna take instead just months and, and, and years. And so we need to recognize that's where we are with this. And therefore we have nothing to compare it to. You can't compare Bitcoin to stocks or to bonds or to real estate or to gold or even to oil because it has nothing in common with any of that stuff. And therefore we have to start with a clean slate, open mind, examining, does this technology make any sense? Is there a commercial use case? Are there investment opportunities that are reasonable for me and my client that I can do so without taking excessive levels of risk or the risk of harming my client? And I'm convinced that once you get the knowledge and education you need, you'll make the decision that's right for you and your client. Whether your answer is yes, buy it, or no, don't buy it, mm -hmm. you'll make the answer that's right for you. And that's all that any client can ask of any advisor. Yeah. Totally agree. And that's where the job of adding value doesn't, doesn't stop and start with or start and stop at just allocating assets, right? The, the job of adding value, especially in advisory practice, is goes well beyond. And this education piece, that's our, that's our North Star. And it sounds like it's yours as well, because that's what's really going to put you in that position to add value, regardless of your belief system in something, regardless of whether or not you're actually allocating to it. So you can say, because uh, I'll give you a specific example. You know, we get clients now who, you know, traditional wealth, you know, we have an RA firm that's been in existence for 25 years. So we now have clients who are going to be passing on their generational wealth and they're calling us and asking us, hey, have you heard of this NFT thing? My kid says he doesn't want to go to college anymore because he's making more money than he could go make anywhere else doing it. Will you please talk to him? And it's just interesting that those are the conversations that are coming about. So we have an opportunity now to continue to add value by just being educated, right? And if you're not, you can't do that. So yeah, let me, let me elaborate on that for you because that's a really, really important point you're raising. I have been able to demonstrate to advisors who hate Bitcoin mm -hmm. that they can make a lot of money serving their clients by hating Bitcoin. And, that more. They, and that, yeah, that often sounds a little weird. In other words, I'm not trying to convince you that you should put Bitcoin or, or digital assets broadly into your client portfolios. I'm not trying to convince you of that at all. Here's the point. We work on behalf of our clients in the broad array of personal finance. We don't merely provide them investments. You can get that from any discount broker. You can go to Vanguard and buy really cheap ETFs. We do much more than that, right? We help them with every aspect of personal finance. So check this out. The recent, most recent surveys, this one from Grayscale, found that 24% of American adults own 
digital assets. One out of four. In other words, your clients own digital assets. They just don't want you to know. It's just like your teenagers who are drinking beer. They're, they're doing it. They don't want you to know about it. <laughs> yep. and, and your clients are not telling you because they know you don't like it. Mm -hmm. And they're afraid that you'll criticize them or you know, judge them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll be judgmental. So they don't want you to know. So here's all you got to do is say to your client, I'm doing an, a review of your account, of your portfolio, of your total personal finances. We're reviewing your financial plan, which we, we do routinely. I want to make sure I'm up to date on all of your other assets, your real estate, which I don't manage, your 401k at work, which I don't manage, your pension funds, which I don't manage your social security benefits, which I don't manage, the life insurance you own, which I didn't sell you. And oh, by the way, do you own any collectibles? Do you have rare wine? Do you have a wine collection? Do you own coins and stamps? Do you have, you know, do you own baseball cards? Let me know what you own so I can factor it into the financial planning analysis I'm doing. Oh, by the way, do you own any digital assets? Once you get the client calmed down, recognizing you're not going to be judgmental, you're not going to be any more judgmental about Bitcoin than you are about baseball cards or artwork or jewelry or a second home in the beach. Now you'll learn that the client has digital assets. And now what you can do are three huge services for your client without saying anything about whether you like or dislike Bitcoin. Number one, let's make sure that it is an appropriate allocation within your portfolio. Let's make sure you are, you're not overweighted because Bitcoin, if you've owned it for the past several years, its price has skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And you might've bought only 1% of assets, but it might now represent 10% of the portfolio. So let's make sure you're not taking excessive risks merely because of your success with buying whatever it is you bought. So let's review in the context of asset allocation and rebalancing. Number two, have you factored into your estate plan, your ownership of these digital assets? Because they're probably not mentioned in your will or in your trust. The asset, if you open an account at Coinbase or Gemini, that account's probably in your name only with no beneficiary designation, no joint owner. It's not in your trust. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure we're paying proper attention to this asset as part of your estate plan, because it could now be a five figure or six figure holding as part of your portfolio. So from an estate planning perspective, do we have it right? And what about liability protection, the risk of getting hacked? Have we taken steps to safeguard how you're storing it? Are you storing it in a cold wallet versus a hot wallet? Mm -hmm. Do you have protection of your private keys? Are we helping you to avoid the risk of losing it, literally losing it, just because it gets lost or stolen or mislaid or you forgot the password? In other words, let me do my job for you, which has no commentary on whether I think you should or should not be owning Bitcoin. And once you take that position, your client will recognize you for the professional that you are, the way that they rely on you for every other aspect of your personal finances. And guess what they very well be, be likely to do? Transfer those assets to you for your management. So you can do the portfolio management, the portfolio rebalancing, tax loss harvesting, portfolio reporting, all the other services, and now you get to charge on those assets. Mm -hmm. Your AOM will go up, your client satisfaction will go up, you'll get more referrals from clients, you'll be able to brag in the marketplace that you provide advice and counsel on this asset class, which most other advisors don't do. That's a differentiator for you to help you in your marketing to win and attract new business. Mm -hmm. So for advisors who tell me, I hate Bitcoin, my answer is great. Let me show you how you can be successful as an advisor hating Bitcoin. And this is something most advisors don't realize. And I, and I think the reason because the reason for that is because they get distracted by the naysayers, by just looking at the Barron's headlines, the, using all the traditional methods that they that they're used to using and what they get to see. So that becomes their world and their vision of what crypto is. And so that makes the work that you, DACFP, and everyone have brought to the world and brought to life over the last year and a half, two years, and I'm going to be honest, probably years before that too, there's probably a lot more time and energy that went in. Um, so let's let's kind of shift a little bit to continue down that path. How, how is DACFP positioning itself to continue to serve advisors 
and meet those education needs. Because as we mentioned earlier, things are evolving so fast and faster than we're used to, right? Yeah, there, there are several uh, issues. Uh, number one is understanding this new asset class, mm -hmm. you know, just the basic tech. Uh, what is blockchain? What is Bitcoin? What is Ethereum? What are NFTs, DAO, uh, DeFi, and metaverse? What is this stuff? Yeah. So that's, that's one, just core fluency in the technology. Second is the practice management application. Uh, what is the investment thesis? How do you construct a portfolio? Uh, how much of the portfolio should you consider uh, as an allocation? Uh, what are the different investment opportunities that are out there? How do they work? How do they differ? And most importantly, what about taxation, regulation, and compliance? Mm -hmm. How do I do all of this within my firm that fits within our culture and our practice management modalities so that it's not disruptive to our business? And let's not forget the ultimate question that matters to all of us advisors, how do I get paid by doing this? Um, so we deal with all of those issues. And then the math, the last one, of course, is how do I explain this to my clients so yeah. that it, it's understandable to them? Uh, because I don't I can barely grasp bit blockchain myself. How do I explain it to a client in plain English so that they'll get it? So we spend a lot of time doing that. and We do it in a lot of formats. We have uh, uh, webinars several uh, every month. We have a lot of content on our website. Uh, and the big thing that we do, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is our certificate in blockchain and digital assets. It's an online self-study, 13 CE credits. Uh, the course is 11 modules, and it's a world-class faculty. Uh, for example, Scott Stornetta is the co-inventor of blockchain technology, is on our faculty. Um, Anders Bronworth, who's with the uh, Boston Fed. Um, uh, Lacey Strom, who... Um, is one of the top attorneys in this space. We, we have uh, the, the former head of IBM's blockchain business is on our faculty. So we've got this, a fabulous faculty teaching all of this stuff. Uh, and it's self-study, self-paced. You can binge it in a weekend if you feel like it, <laughs> or you can spend months going through it. It's very inexpensive. It's only $549 for the entire course. And um, there are a lot of organizations that offer discounts. Uh, to uh, to make it even less expensive, uh, so you can check with your uh, your employer or membership organizations uh, to see if they offer discounts as well. Uh, and when you get your certificate, when you when you complete all the classes, there's a quiz after each course. There's no final exam. When you finish, you get your certificate, which of course we place on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, you can display your digital badge on LinkedIn and other social marketing. And we also have a variety of benefits for you. We have exclusive events uh, and content only provided to those who hold the certificate. We're building an entire community for the certificate holders. And we offer the DACFP advisor directory. Uh, on my national radio show, we promote uh, DACFP and the certificate. And I invite my listeners that if you're looking for an advisor who's knowledgeable about this, you can go to our advisor directory and find an advisor near you who can help you with this subject. Uh, and so it's a lead generation tool uh, to help clients, uh, to help advisors build their business, find new clients. Um, and it's free. We don't charge anything uh, to the consumer or to the advisor. It's available only to certificate holders. So we're doing an awful lot. We're also adding more courses on, an annual, on a regular basis. We'll add eight new courses this year. For example, when we built the certificate program, NFTs didn't exist. So we're adding a course on NFTs, writing a course on DeFi, writing a course on the metaverse. We've got a, a second course on taxes uh, to help advisors have the fluency they need to be able to serve their clients. I appreciate you diving into the specifics there because, and as uh, someone who's gone through it, um, and spent a lot of time in it. I didn't binge it in a weekend. I tried to take my time with it because just like a lot of other advisors, you know, I was, when I was practicing and I was in uh, the New York, New Jersey market, you know, I was one of those advisors, right? 2017, when that first mania hit, I was one of them. I said, don't pay attention to it. It's, it's going away. There's nothing really there. Um, and it took, you know, really being open-minded to learn more, to then realize the potential and the opportunity. Um, but going through it, it's been such a benefit to say that I learned from someone like 
Storynetta, right? Who is co-founder of blockchain technology. Like you can't, um, you can't diminish the value that that adds in terms of confidence to know like, okay, we're not just going onto YouTube. You're not just going onto these social media platforms and learning from all these people who are just trying to, you know, sling certain things, right? And they're more for entertainment purposes, right? That's very, very important. Um, and so, and I think also the benefits after you get the designation or after you get the certificate uh, are wide and wide and ranging. Um, you know, having, you know, personally experienced the accessibility and the lead generation uh, with our partnership and being able to, you know, add value to clients after going through it. I mean, it's just, so if you're listening to this, um, you've now got to hear a little bit more detail on how it posi was positioned and how it's going to continue to position for the future. Um, so Rick, I know you've got a lot of other things happening. I'd like to take the opportunity now to kind of shift a little bit to, I know there's a book you mentioned, uh, I think before with your wife that you've got, you know, a network. So please, uh, there are many other things happening in your world. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're venturing off to. Oh, yeah, my, uh, my new book is coming out in May called The Truth About Crypto. Uh, it's uh, my 11th book. Uh, I'm the best-selling author uh, in the financial uh, advisory space. Uh, I've sold um, more than a million copies of my books in print on a worldwide basis. They've been published in uh, seven languages. Uh, and in fact, uh, The Truth About Your Future, my last book, uh, and next month uh, in March is being published in Japan. Uh, wow. in Japanese. And so we're really excited about that. Uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm very excited about the truth about crypto because there, there are, to your point, Mark, there are a lot of resources out there, but they're questionable, either in terms of the spin that they give, the bias, mm -hmm. uh, the omissions, and sometimes, quite frankly, they're just poorly written. Um, so just because you're knowledgeable doesn't mean you can communicate all that well. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm known for being able to take complex concepts put them in a plain English. And advisors will discover the book really helpful to give to clients uh, so that you don't have to spend the time educating them. You just you know share this with them because it will help them understand why you're giving them the advice you're giving, uh, both good and bad, uh, pro and con. Uh, so we're excited about the truth about crypto coming out uh, in May. You can already pre-order it on Amazon and your favorite bookseller. There will also be uh, uh, an audio book as well uh, on Audible, um, via uh, Apple and Google and everywhere you get your, your Audible books. Uh, so we're very excited about all that. Um, in addition to uh, the activities we have with DACFP and my new book, uh, my wife and I have also created a new media company called The Truth About Your Future. Everything I've been doing over the past three decades uh, has been focused on financial education, reaching consumers on a broad mass scale and everything that we've done has been for the benefit of the company that we created, Edelman Financial. Um, well, now we've left Edelman Financial, uh, but we still love to do the education. So all the radio, television, webinar, master classes, newsletter, books, uh, and podcasting, video casting, we're now doing under the umbrella of my new media company. And so I've launched a new radio show called The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman. It uh, airs on about 30 uh, markets around the country every weekend. It's also downloadable as a podcast. It's also uh, a video cast, so you can watch the video on YouTube uh, as well as at our website. And uh, that website is called thetafe.com, uh, the T-A-Y-F, or Truth About Your Future, thetafe.com. And we have tons of educational content, not just on crypto, but mm -hmm. on the five personal finance topics that matter most. Uh, my concern has been, uh, as someone who's been providing financial education over the past 30, 30, 40 years, we're all now pretty good at this. You know, most Americans realize the need to save. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fair to say that everybody who can afford to save is saving. The problem now is that we have a, a change in circumstance that many people are not familiar with. Number one is longevity. We're now living longer than ever before. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on the advisory boards at both the Milken Center uh, for the Future of Aging and the Stanford University Center on Longevity. Uh, and we do work with MIT's Age Lab uh, as well. Um, all the scientists are telling us 
that if you're alive in 2030, odds are pretty good you'll live to age 100 or beyond. Mm -hmm. This changes everything. If you're going to live to age 100, the question is, will your money last as long as you do? Uh, Many financial planners are still producing financial plans that assume their client will be dead at 85. Um, That's ridiculous. Uh, And that financial plan, which works to age 85 or 90, might explode if you margin out 95 or 100 or 105. Mm -hmm. So we as financial advisors need to make sure we're using realistic assumptions based on technological innovation in medicine and neuroscience, uh, nanotech, biotech, bioinformatics, 3D printing, big data, AI, uh, and robotics. All of these technologies are contributing to longer lifespans. I mean, look how fast we produced a vaccine for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just astonishing the innovations that are coming. The scientists are projecting broadly that over the next 10 years, we're going to cure heart disease, respiratory illness, diabetes, obesity, and cancer itself. Uh, This is remarkable. And this is why we need to rethink college and career, home ownership, estate planning, Uh, it's going to affect every aspect of society and most importantly, investment management. Mm -hmm. We can't invest our money the way we've done it for the past 50 years because the world is so different now. Interest rates are at historic lows. We know what happens when interest rates are low and rising. Bonds lose value. Real estate prices are at all-time highs. We forgot what happened in 07 when real estate was at an all-time high. Uh, When interest rates go up, affordability of houses goes down. So real estate is weakened. It's been further weakened by the pandemic with commercial real estate not being used the way that it was before. And the stock market being at an all-time high with multiples racing ahead of corporate profitability, what's going to happen in the stock market? So we need alternative ways to invest. And that's why I'm a big fan of exponential technologies. That was the basis of my last book, The Truth About Your Future, which is why I built my entire media company around that theme. So exponential technologies, and the biggest one there is blockchain and digital assets. And then the fifth subject that we're covering is health and wellness. Because if we're going to live age 100, we better protect our brain and our body. Uh, So we spend time talking with people about nutrition, diet, exercise, stress management, relationships, and so on. uh, Because this is the key to a long, healthy, happy life. Um, So these are the subjects that matter, and we're really excited about it. The show's doing great. Uh, and we've got wonderful sponsors underwriting the program and I encourage you to uh, listen to the podcast at the, uh, at the TAFE uh, or the truth, AYF.com. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you going into those kind of other projects as well, because it's really important, I think, and something we try to expound upon as well as part of our, you know, DNA at Arbor. Um, and it's that, you know, especially when you think about money, money overlaps a lot of those different areas, right? No matter what, that's the, com- right. it's a common theme, right? right. Um, and especially when you talk about health and wellness and redefining what it means to accumulate wealth, um, spend your wealth, uh, you know, live longer. Um, we have to rethink and redefine all of the things we've, we've done. And you mentioned, you know, doing the financial planning. I, I still remember, I haven't been practiced for a couple of years now, but I remember you, when you open up a financial plan, whether you're using eMoney, Money Guide Pro, or any other planning software, the defaults still go to those lower numbers, and they haven't been updated yet. It's interesting knowing that all the science and technology that you're mentioning that's happening, and yet we're still not updating it. And it's time that we finally put some energy out there to bring this up and just bring it to the forefront. So what you're doing is absolutely critical to pushing forward to being able, just being comfortable, being able to be open-minded enough to think, okay, I've built a business, I've built my practice, and I've built my relationships this way, and I've done a great job serving them. And it's okay if we upgrade that now and we start redefining a little bit. So what you're doing, I think, is going to help a lot of people uh, go on that, that journey. The basic message for both advisors and their clients is that what got you here is not going to get you there. Mm -hmm. The successful strategies you used over the past 30, 40 years are not going to work in the next 30 or 40. We have a totally different world now. It's becoming digital and that's changing everything. 
And if you assume that the past strategies of success will work going forward, you're going to be the next Kodak. Um, you know, 135 year old company filed bankruptcy in 2012 because of digital photography. Uh, and Instagram, the year Kodak went broke, Instagram with 18 months old, 13 employees was sold for a billion dollars using digital photography, which by the way, Kodak invented and couldn't monetize <laughs> because it was disruptive to their film processing business. Yep. So you need to invest in the companies of the 21st century, the technologies, the innovations of the 21st century. You need to go, as Rain Gretzky is famous for saying, where the public is going, not where it's been. And too many people don't do that. Uh, and we need to make sure we're not resting on the wall. So I challenge financial advisors to evaluate the assumptions you're using in your financial planning. What interest rate are you assuming? What inflation rate? What tax rate? And what life expectancy? What are those numbers that you're assuming? Uh, and oh, by the way, you might as well throw in rate of return, because if you think you're going to get the rates of return this decade out of stocks, bonds, and real estate that we have gotten over the last 20 years, you could very well be setting your client up for failure. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't providing uh, exposure to exponential technologies, uh, I think you're making a big mistake. Well, I think that's a great way to finish off this episode. That call to action for advisors. I hope if you're listening right now, get use this as your kick in the fanny, get that energy going towards these things. Um, Rick, before we adjourn here today, is there any any other places where, where can people find you? Where should people go to find more uh, about you, DACFP, and anything else you're doing? Uh, the easiest way is at DACFP.com. I'm um, easy to reach and happy to hear from you. Love it. Well, again, I really appreciate you taking the time today to spend with me and uh, our audience. Uh, we truly wish you the best. We're going to be rooting for your success from afar and hopefully closer as we continue to develop our relationship as well. Um, and we'll see you at, oh, actually, you know what? I, I can't believe I didn't mention this. Please. I'm based in Austin, Texas. I'm excited because there's a, a big event I'm hearing about. Can you tell me <laughs> yeah. a little bit about it? Yeah, uh, I didn't mention it. It's coming in June, uh, June 8 and 9 in Austin, one of my favorite towns, uh, our, our vision event. It's the biggest event we do of the year. It's a two-day conference. Some of the biggest experts in the field of uh, digital assets will be there. And really cool, everybody who comes, we're going to take you to a Bitcoin mining farm. Uh, so wow. you're going to actually see a facility where they mine Bitcoin. It's going to be a total ton of fun. Uh, Riot Blockchain has uh, got a, a major facility outside of Austin, uh, and they're going to host us there. And it's going to be a lot of fun. You can register online right now uh, at DACFP uh, for the Vision event. It's going to be a terrific program. You'll learn a lot about this subject and meet a lot of the experts and companies that are delivering the products and services to help you integrate this into your practice. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. I'm happy we got to get that in before we ended the episode, uh, but we're excited to see you there. And if you're listening to this, uh, please don't be shy. We love to talk to anybody and everybody, and we hope to see you there as well. Rick, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and we will hopefully see you very soon. Thanks, Mark. We appreciate you listening to this edition of the Asset Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Mark Nichols. Please don't forget to let us know how you like the show by rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you like to listen. For more downloadable digital asset resources and educational opportunities, please visit us at arbordigital.io. We are here to help you get off zero safely and securely. Thanks again for tuning in and be sure to tell someone you care about them. Cheers.
We are financial advisors. However, we are not your financial advisor. Unless you're under contract with or actively speaking with Arbor Capital Management or Arbor Digital, a division of Arbor Capital Management. This podcast is just that, a podcast. It is not financial, legal, or tax advice. If you have individual questions, please reach out.